Nottinghamshire miners decide they'll stay at work and they'll cross picket lines. The decision that was taken in Mansfield this afternoon by a meeting of delegates from all 25 pits in the county and is directly contrary to the earlier recommendation by the local NUM executive. From Mansfield, John Thorne reports. About 400 miners, men from the coalfields of Yorkshire, Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire, gathered to surround the union headquarters as the branch delegates debated the executive recommendation to put pickets on all Nottinghamshire pits. There were scuffles in the crowd as tempers frayed and it became clear that the acknowledged moderates were going to overthrow the picket decision. The police made three arrests while the representatives of the 25 pits conferred inside the building. And as the delegates filed out, their decision to work on had already leaked and the abuse was loud and angry. In South Wales, about 600 pickets, the most yet, turned out at the Port Talbot Steelworks to try to stop coal supplies getting through. About 200 police were on duty and trouble developed as some lorries insisted on crossing the picket lines. 29 arrests were made. A local MP has complained of police brutality and bullying on the picket lines, accusations flatly denied by the South Wales Police. The Director General of the CBI, Sir Terence Beckett, has said there's little public sympathy for the miners and the real price of Arthur Scargill's policies was other people's jobs. It was nonsense to suggest the coal industry was being butchered, rather miners were out for a privilege to be insulated from the economic facts of life. The main steel union, the ISTC, has decided against taking any action to support the miners. The union's executive, while recommending their members work normally, criticised the miners and transport unions for, as they put it, exacerbating a precarious situation within the steel industry. BBC One is off the air because of a 24-hour strike by the broadcasting unions belonging to the Entertainment Trades Alliance. The strike is in support of 600 scenery shifters sacked last Wednesday after five weeks on the picket lines. The dispute is over a cost-cutting reorganisation of their department. Many job centres closed this afternoon when staff walked out to protest over plans to scale down the service. 800 job centre staff will lose their own jobs when more than 600 centres are turned into job points at supermarkets and banks. 100,000 teachers, members of Britain's second largest teachers' union, are to stage a half-day strike in protest at their 3% pay offer. It's also against the employer's refusal to go to arbitration. They've also decided to withdraw goodwill as from today. Dennis Kelly, whose conviction for murder in Liverpool last year started a campaign for his release, has lost his High Court appeal. There were rowdy scenes in court when the judge said he'd been tried fairly and squarely for the murder of Willie Osu in a nightclub brawl. Richard Branson's Virgin Atlantic airline has been given a licence to fly from Gatwick to Newark. The fare each way, £99. It's hoped the new service will start in June, but they've still to get an air operator's certificate. The Foreign Secretary has been criticised by an all-party committee of MPs for the way he dealt with the American intervention in Grenada. Sir Geoffrey Howe's approach to the crisis was described as somewhat lethargic. The Foreign Office was insufficiently attuned to political feeling in the Caribbean. The Commons Foreign Affairs Committee also says that the Americans deliberately kept Britain in the dark about last, last October's invasion. It does say, though, that by not taking part in the invasion, Britain avoided serious repercussions with other Commonwealth countries. But at no point did Britain seem to have taken any initiative either to discover the full intentions of Caribbean leaders or to dissuade them from military action. Mrs. Gandhi has been talking to India's first cosmonaut aboard the Soviet Soyuz 7 space station. With two other Soviet cosmonauts, he blasted off yesterday to join the three already in orbit. Mrs. Gandhi congratulated her countrymen and told him all eyes in India were on him. She hoped it would make her country more aware of the possibilities of space. Now the main news again with subtitles. And miners' delegates from Knott's Pits have rejected advice to strike and not cross pickets. BBC One is off the air because of a strike over the sacking of 600 scenery shifters. The second largest teachers' union will hold a half-day strike on Wednesday over a 3% pay offer. A new airline, Virgin Atlantic, has been given a licence for £99 transatlantic flights. 
An all-party committee has criticized the foreign secretary over the U.S. invasion of Grenada. They said his approach had been somewhat lethargic, though the U.S. had kept Britain in the dark. There'll be more news on 2 at 10.40. Coming up next, a look at the weather.